Hello everyone, so today I'm going to do one of these little quick tidbit tutorials on some kind of really useful um, functionality in a tool. And uh, so we're using Autodesk 3ds Max 2015 today. This technique will work in earlier versions of 3D Studio Max and newer ones. It's basically uh, based on splines, which have been in 3ds Max for a long time. Um, so this tutorial is going to be how to create roads or a racetrack using um, editable splines in 3D Studio Max. Um, it's directly related to Unity in that uh, many times I wanted to find the fastest way to prototype a racetrack um, in Unity and I needed to be able to make a mesh that I could use in Unity and I needed to, be able to make it quick and it's you really can't do that in Unity so you use a 3D application like Blender or uh, Max or Maya or something like this. Uh, Max is really commonly used in the gaming industry so we'll work with this. So one of the first things when you start out is you'll be in the perspective view but we want to go to the top view so I'm gonna hit the T key and so you're looking top down on your world or the lack thereof of your world and um, normally I would have a map in here as a texture that would show my track design and concept art or you would have your city layout and you could start drawing from the top down and you don't have to worry about your geometry or your splines um, going up or down in the world um, like up in the um, y-axis or in um, max the uh, the uh, max is z up right I want to say let me hit the p key and go back yeah, max is Z up, um, but Unity's Y up. It does the transition for you in the FBX export. But let's just get to this. So say we wanted to make a racetrack. And um, I'm not going to put a map or texture in here for us to trace off of because I just want to show you the technique. So you can think about putting your own design in here and then tracing on it. So we will go into the Create tab here, Shapes, and then do a line. Okay, And just by default on this line here, we just go in here and I'm going to just start drawing some some shape, a shape basically. We haven't converted it to an editable spline so it's really a shape at this point. And then if I hover over my start point and click, it will ask me if I want to close it and yes we want to close it. Okay so I have a shape here um, for my racetrack. Um, and it has vertices Okay, where I clicked and I drew. I can grab these and I can go in here and basically tweak them to precisely fit um, the map or whatever it is on that I want to trace or my design, my racetrack, okay? And uh, I could go in here and just kind of smooth these out and make everything nice and smooth and not abrupt. Um, the other thing is, is if you want your Bezier handles or curves, you want to be able to adjust this a different way, select all of the vertices, hover over one of them, and change this to Bezier right here, okay? And now you'll get, when you select a vertice, kind of these Bezier handles. If you're used to working in Adobe Illustrator, you'll understand what these are. They're basically tangents. Um, you also might recognize these from... Um, editing animation curves in Unity or Maya or something like that it will basically let you adjust the in and out tangents on a curve. Okay, So here comes the really cool part on this. If we go hit the P key and go back to perspective, you'll see that this is perfectly all on zero and because we were drawing it from the top down we don't have to deal with anything, any elevations or anything like that. All right. So say we want to um, turn this into a racetrack like immediately. We want to preview what it would look like as a racetrack. Under rendering we would enable in viewport. Instead of radial we would go rectangular. We'll hit the F3 key because we're in wireframe mode right now and we want to be in shaded and we can kind of look and see what our spline did. Alright, um, also it goes without mentioning that this is a really cool tool for making walls and things like that too. So if you also want to make your barriers or barricades for your racetrack, this is a really good way to do it too. And so here's your width property. You can give it a width of zero and it's just a narrow polygon. You can just slider and give it a really wide width. And you can also give it a height. They call it length. It's technically it's height. Okay. All right. Really neat. What we would do for a racetrack is we would give it a zero height. And then now we have a width, right? 
And in the width, you can go in here and literally type the real world meters. So racetracks usually or road is about 15 meters wide. So there you have your road. And then you can go in here into the vertex um, mode and you can also add the elevations that you want to your racetrack and things like that, right? Not too bad. If you feel like you need to be able to adjust a little bit more finite or whatever, just turn off the enable and viewport. Go in here and select like a segment where you want to add um, a section. You can use the refine button and manually place that vertice where you want it. So now if I go back and enable it in the viewport, I have yet yeah, another point that I can go in here and kind of create a little extra um, elevation there. Another way you want to do it, if you want it to be perfectly divided in the, you know, in the precise uh, division here, you can set how many you need and you can hit divide and it'll put two verts perfectly evenly spaced. If you just want one in there, do it that way. And again, just go back and enable it in the viewport. It's pretty sweet. Now we have the vertices there. Um, if you want your vertices to be perfectly evenly spaced. You can go down in your modifier list here and you can go into the normalize spline and basically if we go down in here and we set the segment length to something like two or three. Basically segment length, if I can explain this, I'll go back. So every spot, whoo, see we have a lot of vertices now on our normalized spline, right? the distance needs to be further and and I didn't get a chance to explain it quite yet so basically what this does is this segment length you have um, vertices and you have your entire spline and you have segments which are the distances or spaces in between each vertice that's called a segment so when you normalize it it's saying give us the length of each segment we put in a value of six and that says it's six meters between every vert so basically, the less the le the less amount of meters you put in here, the closer the vertices are to each other. So you could try a value maybe like 10, and basically what that does is just kind of normalizes these individual points here uh, on your spline. You don't need to use that if you just want to work with the points you have, but if you do want to have nice even um, points along your spline for basically duplicating something down your spline or whatnot and so you can go in here and kind of tweak and you can add the elevations and things like that um, there are also tools here if you want to add more to your racetrack and you're like I have a part of the track that goes in here between these two segments here you could do it a few ways you could go in here and kind of delete that segment um, or you could go in here and select that vertice and you could, I'm looking for it, I use this every single day, and I can't. you could do break, and what that'll do is basically break the welding of these two uh, vertices, which if they are already broken, you want to weld them together, this, this weld command here welds them back together, and then they become uh, one vertice, um, if we want to break them so that we can kind of insert more racetrack here, we can do that, if you want to add um, if you want to add more to your racetrack, let's go in here and adjust these Bezier curves. Then we would go in here and it's uh, create line and just basically start creating more line. And we might have to go in here, hit the S key and kind of uh, snap. Oh, it's not set to snap to the vertice. Turn on vertex. When you open up these grid and snap settings here by holding down right mouse button, um, if you do the right mouse button, it'll pop that up. And then we can just snap to that. We can weld. Now it's one point. We can snap to that and we can weld. And then we can go in here if we don't like the way that this uh, vertices are vert. This vert here is set up. We can go and change it to Bezier type and get nice um, smooth here. Notice that it's set to corner. Now, if you do have hard edged corners you want to draw, corner is a good one. 
Um, another neat uh, one type is Bezier corner, which means you can have a hard edge that comes in but then comes out soft. That's kind of neat if you see what that's doing, but if you need it to be like nice and smooth, um, go with uh, smooth or go with um, go with Bezier. Okay, and you can group select them too, Bezier. And then go in and just basically adjust the rest of the piece of the track that you need to adjust. Turn on enable and viewport again. And then you might need to tweak some of these corners. You may need to go and adjust the Bezier because some of these corners might produce weird geometry because they're too tight. You know what I'm saying? So move either their position or the spline to kind of smooth it out. Um, I will show you one of the benefits of that normalizing the spline. If you'll notice here our geometry um, where the vertices are a little more tight to these corners the geometry gets to be um, very dense and then out here it's not as dense and we have some issue out here probably let me turn this off probably from lack of resolution in our spline here might want to either add another spline or move that out just adjust it, take a look at it, make sure we've smoothed it out. The normalized spline, what that'll do is basically create perfect subdivisions for this. And uh, let me get a color on here where you can kind of see this. There we go, the subdivisions better. So much more dense here, spread out here. That's where normalized spline comes in and helps. So I'm going to hit the N key and uh, we'll go down here to normalize spline and then go back down. Usually if you hit this right here, it says show the end result. So you can go down in your stack and see the result of the normalized spline operation. I'm going to make it something like five. And sometimes it doesn't show up. There we go. Is that showing up properly? Are we seeing that? And it hasn't updated on our, there we go. Okay, so it updated. Um, we probably want to turn off Optimize and Adaptive. This is pretty cool. You can use these. Adaptive will say, hey, in the turns where I need more um, density of geometry, make it more dense in the curves and less dense outside of the curves. You can turn that off if you just want these to be perfectly spaced. And Optimize will do something similar. It'll just keep the density, um, it's just a different algorithm for determining, hey, more density in these curves to keep them nice and smooth. Um, you can turn that off too. No big deal. And then interpolation is the smoothness. Like we can ramp that up to something, it'll be super dense. We can turn that down to zero and you can see the true. Turning interpolation down to zero will show you the true um, density of this normalized spline. Basically that's what it looks like without the normalization on it. This is what it looks like, um, you know, with it. It's kind of glitchy if you can't tell in how the, the viewport displays it, but honestly this looks good to me. Uh, the normalized spline modifier on it with a segment length of 5 looks good. You can still go in here and grab your original um, vertices and you'll see that the viewport sometimes have a, has a little wiggy um, issue in Max with updating. But you can see that the spline completely readjusts its uh, topology and everything to allow you to basically tweak completely as you go. And I just love this tool for making um, roads and racetracks. You can also go in there at any point and make the elevation. If you want to zero out your elevations, you go into this Z box right here and just find the dense where this vertice is. And then if it has a val value that isn't zero here, zero it out. And you can see it's not previewing properly again. Ugh, I deal with this max viewport um, issue every single day. Um, but you can see the smoothness of the original spline on there. I don't know why the viewport's like. Uh, wiggy like that. Sometimes adjusting this interpolation thing kicks it back. Usually it's this kicks it back into showing us the proper uh, resolution. So I hope that trick right there on how to use um, a spline and actually we never did convert it to an editable spline so we can. We can right click on it convert to editable spline and so now it's an editable spline and we can work with it. Um, you can go in here and look at all the different um, options you have. 
A lot of these options don't open up until you go into segment or spline mode. Um, you can, of course, add points. You can reverse the spline. You can do a cool thing like booleans and mirroring of it and extending it and just really experiment with what all these different things do. You can also um, go generate mapping coordinates, use real world size, and you can get UVs done on this uh, by default. And I would just assign like maybe a material to it. Go in here on this diffuse thing and we would, let's see, assign like, and so we have UVs done on that. And uh, you can go in here and we could add a UVW map uh, modifier. I'm sorry, I added, went down in the modifier stack here and added unwrap UVW. I'm used to going so fast through this that I just don't stop anymore. And then you can open up and we'll turn on our checker pattern and you can look and see that there are the UVs uh, perfectly spaced and everything. Uh, in this case, I haven't assigned it like a real, what it does is it's basing on um, real world map size. I didn't give it a, um, where did I drag my modifier? I'll open it back up. I didn't give it a real world texture map in here. So what I would do in that case, like when I'm at work or whatever, I will just, um, I will just scale it down and get it to fit into this, uh, zero to one space. But the UVs are, are just perfect for roads. I'm going to go in here and maybe now I jacked them up a little bit, but just go in here and kind of manually edit them a little. And I'm not doing a great job at that because I'm probably zoomed too far out. And I'm way too far off the origin. But there you go, they're done. And the UVs are done no matter what the poly density is like. Basically, we did the normalized spline, that helped, but they're the same squareness in curves as they are in the straightaway. Okay, so that works. And then you could turn this on so you can see what the modifier looks like without being on it. And there you go. So you get UVs, you can collapse to it. Well, anything you collapse to it, this is one of the caveats, um, will convert it to an editable mesh. So if you always want it to stay as an editable spline, what I always do at work and what I suggest is to hit Control V, make a copy, and just, you can collapse that copy and that way just keep a copy of your spline and also on your copy um, you could just delete that turn off enable and viewport that way you have like your mesh version and then you have your spline version that's uh, your non-destructed spline version and then this is basically your mesh ready for unity right here this is your editable mesh okay um, let me see any other caveats that I didn't think of enable and viewport uh, let me turn off previewing this. Um, oh yeah, there was a big one. <clears throat> uh, this was a big one. Um, so I didn't discover this until I'd work with them for a little bit. And if someone knows how to get around this, let me know. But when I set the length to zero, it gave it a zero height. But even with a zero height, it was still overlapping. It was like a box with zero height. It was overlapping geometry. So what I found myself doing was, even though I was going to make a flat road with no depth, I gave it depth. Again, I would hit um, Control-V and I would back up my copy so I can leave my original one alone. And with that said, um, with the one that I've converted to geometry, I can right click on it and convert it. Um, let's just do it in the viewport. Convert to an editable poly or an editable mesh. I'm going to hit Alt Q and Alt Q puts it basically isolate selects it by itself. And then what I do is I would grab an edge and hit Alt R. And then over here I would hover over polygon with control held down. It will that'll basically convert your selection of edges to a poly. And then you'll see what I did here. Okay? And then I need to repeat select an edge, hit Alt R. Alt R is just select an edge ring. Hold down control, click poly, convert, delete. And then down here on the bottom, I can actually go to element, holding down right mouse button and just select the bottom element. And there is a truly, if I go to polygon mode, this is truly flat. That is something I found 
caveat that you need to do with this. And if I end isolate and go back into my um, not isolated mode, there I have my flat road and we'll turn off viewing and viewport and there you have your original spline. It's okay, and this is the one you would export into Unity. This is an editable poly, it will completely export in out into Unity as an FBX, no problem. Okay, so just catch that little caveat. I don't know how to get around that because basically it extrudes as a box. Now, the one way I did know is to just don't use this technique and you can use, go into the modifier stack and you can use what's called a sweep, sweep modifier. And in the sweep modifier, I believe it is, what's well, the bar? But here's the problem. The bar has the same property, length, width, height. I don't know how to get it to where we just extrude um, just extrude a flat polygon. There's tube. But anyway, uh, also as well, this sweep uh, modifier is extremely powerful for making like L shapes along a spline. Or let me see if we can go through here. There's just T junction, junctions, tubes. If you need to extrude like pipes or hoses or wire, um, quarter round, uh, it's just crazy. The uh, I'm trying to find, I want to say it was the tube version. So if I go in here and we do that, this was actually really good for making kind of those um, bumpy um, risers on the edge of a racetrack. Um, there's just so many different ways you could use this tool. It's it's crazy. So hopefully that showed to you how you can make some quick and easy racetrack surfaces and road surfaces using splines and 3ds Max, and how that could make a mesh that's just easily usable inside of Unity. Again, thank you for watching. Um, subscribe or like the video, and we'll produce more like it.